Hi, this is Prophetic Encounters with Prophet Siobhan. Before we get started, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If there's something that you would like to talk about or things that you would like to go over, please leave a comment in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching. Hi everybody, this is Prophet Siobhan. Uh, back with another prophetic encounter. Um, today we're going to tackle more prophetic signs or signs that you are a person that have the gift of prophecy or a prophetic gift. Um, today we're coming from missionaries of prayer abounding in the Lord of God um, and the different um, things that they have wrote about having the prophetic gift and what you can look for in the signs to know if that if that you in fact are a prophet. Number one, you desire deep intimacy with God and you have a deep prayer life. As I have stated in other videos, um, we are prayer warriors. We are prophetic intercessors. Prayer warriors. We have a deep prayer life and we are always in prayer. No matter if it's five minutes or if it's an hour, we are always in prayer because we have that that deep intimacy with God. That's that's one of the ways that we connect with God um, is through our prayer life. In fact, God spoke to me and told me that your your anointing um, flow through your prayers. So it's it's in your prayer. So I know that any time that I come to somebody, I definitely need to be in prayer or have been praying or prayed up. Um. So if you have a deep desire and a deep intimacy with God and you have a deep prayer life, that is one of the most important key signs to being a prophet. Number two is you hear God speak to you in many of the ways in which he speaks to the prophets. Okay, let's talk about that. God speaks to people audibly. God speaks to people through signs like numbers and colors. Um... God speaks to people through different objects. Something could be falling off of you. Um, like if, I, if I'm wearing a necklace and I'm, especially if I'm in a church and I'm preaching or I'm speaking and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden my necklace fall off of my neck or an earring fall off of me. That's just let me know that God is causing something to fall in the spirit. If it breaks, that means God is breaking something in the spirit. You got to look for the different signs. Because God is all about sign, miracle signs and wonders. And he sent his signs. But you have to pay attention to the signs. And you got to be able to speak those signs into the atmosphere. We're going to come to that too. Because my God, it is, <laughs> it, it is amazing. So, um... He speaks to you audibly. He spoke. He he called. He called. Um, I believe that was Samuel, and Samuel didn't know what was going on. And he ran to Eli and asked Eli, um, "Did he call him?" Eli said, "No, I didn't call you, son." He went back and laid down, and he heard it again. He went back and asked Eli, "Did you call me?" No, son, I didn't call you. And the third time that he said it, Samuel said, I am here, Father. I'm here. He realized it was God. Um, that also lets you know, too, if you're called. Because God calls you audibly. He's going to call your name. That lets you know that you are a prophet. Because he calls you. He called me at a young age. 
I, I remember I was I was sitting in the house and um in my room and I was playing. I was I'm always by myself. Uh, as I stated in the other videos, uh, I'm always uh alone. I'm always to myself. Isolation, or isolating myself and just away from others because I was different. So I uh, no one ever understood me and it, it was very irritating because they didn't understand me. So I was off to myself, anywho, and I was playing with a, a dime. I would throw the dime in the air, and I would catch the dime in my hand. And I would throw it in the air again, and I would catch the dime in my hand. And I remember that each time that I threw the dime up in the air and caught it, I I I, uh, I remember that. I had got so good at catching it, like I didn't have to look anymore. I just knew exactly when it was gonna fall. So I had my eyes closed, and I, it was just different. Now, also too, we like challenges, and we also like puzzles. Okay, so I'm throwing a dime up, and I'm catching a dime, throwing it up, and catching a dime. And one time I threw the dime up, and I went to catch it, but the dime didn't fall in my hand. So I opened up my eyes, and I began to look around on the floor for the dime. I began to look everywhere for this dime because it could have fell on the floor and rolled away or anything. But I'm searching for this dime. I'm looking for this dime. And um, I heard a loud voice, a voice I never heard before in my life. Never heard it before in my life. It said, Siobhan. And I'm looking around. I'm I can't I can't find nobody. I can't see nobody. Making sure my dad wasn't calling me. Cause it was a male's voice and, and it called my name so strong and so stern and firm. And um I was looking for the person that said my name. And so I went back into looking for the dime. I paid it no mind. I went back looking for the dime and I heard it again. And I looked around and I'm searching, like, who called it? And I'm, 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 ma'am, sir, you know, just calling out, trying to make sure that my parents wasn't calling me. And I'm like, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe this is in my mind. Maybe I'm tripping. So um, I'm going crazy or something. So I start looking for the dime again. And then I heard the voice again. And then after I heard the voice, my dad called me. Now, the significance in that is my dad called me by my nickname and that he had given me. And um, God called me by my first name. And um, soon as my dad called me, and I, I knew his voice for sure, and I knew that that was my dad because he called me by my nickname, and I said, sir, and as soon as I said, sir, the dime fell out of the air. Oh, Jesus. It was a wonderful experience now that I'm this age. Because then I didn't understand it because I was so young. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what was going on. And um, just the point that God was reaching out to me then even as a young lad is amazing and it's just so like honorable like I am so honored and privileged that he would even reach out to someone like me at that age so you hear God speak to you in many of the ways in which he speaks to the prophets. So sometimes he speaks through dreams. You can have a dream of him talking to you. I've had so many encounters and so many experiences with God prophetically that I can sit here literally all day and talk to y'all about these experiences. But that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is to find out if you are prophetic. You're not a psychic, okay? You have a prophetic gift. 
Because when we move over into uh, thinking that we are a psychic, we move into what they call a spirit of divination. Because what we begin to do is we we begin to operate in a in 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 a witchcraft spirit by trying to gain monetary uh, gains and just different. Things. It's so many levels to uh, this issue that it does not make sense. But we will talk about that uh, as well. I will get on here and I will explain those um, things as well. So you have to be careful because it's, it's like walking on a tight rope. Because if you're not careful, you will move into the spirit of witchcraft in your prophetic call without even trying. Okay, number three says, always seeking to hear the Lord on situations. Prophets always look for what God has to say. We always want to know what, what, what does God say? What, what does God say about this? What do he have to say about this certain situation? What what would be the answer from God? What would, what would God want me to do with this? We look for that in God. We don't just act on our own, especially when it's dealing with someone else. Now, with our own self, yes, we might act before even thinking. We might act, but ma majority of the time we want to know what what is God saying about this? What is he saying about this certain situation? Number four is you have premonitions or receive information from the Lord on future events that you've seen come to pass. Now, premonitions, meaning you either dreamed it or you saw it through an open vision Or God spoke it, or you just, just different things, okay? Uh, which you have to be careful of as well, because psychic use words like premonition. Because before I knew what a prophet was, and that a prophet exists, I thought I was a psychic, and I thought that I was having premonitions. Because I would see and dream things that came to pass. So I'm like, okay, I'm a psychic. That's what this is. And um that's what's going on. And I I just went I just went with that. That's who I am. I'm a um I'm a psychic. That's what I was thinking. I'm a psychic, I'm a medium, I'm a psychic medium. Okay? But the key the key to this this number four is Future events that you've seen come to pass. Now, some events could be deadly. Some events could be okay. Like I've seen um, these stores being built with gas stations connected to them. Like Kroger's. I saw Kroger's um, get a gas station. And I'm like, why is Kroger's? Because, you know, we wasn't used to that. Here in Arkansas, I'm like, why is Kroger's getting that's that's weird? Why would they put a gas station there? That that's no, I'm just tripping. Why would I dream that? And it came to pass. Kroger's got a gas station put onto their build their building, and I was like, oh wow, God showed me that. And or um, living even living here in Osceola, Arkansas, um. The the um, grocery store had closed down here, and that was the only grocery store, and everybody was, you know, kind of going crazy and things like that. But God showed me a vision of that store been opening, and me being in that store shopping. And I told my sister, she was like, "God, we need to go." I said, "It's gonna open." I said, "It'll be open by the before the end of this year. It's going to be open." And by golly, it opened up at the end of November. The beginning of December, it had opened back up. However, it did close back after a year been open, but it did open. Um, number five, you if you are a seer, you will see things in the spirit 
that others cannot see. If you are a seer, you will see things in the spirit that others cannot see. You may even believe it was your imagination at first. You will see things in the spirit, okay, <laughs> that others can't see. While in prayer, I couldn't wait to get to this so I can say, tell y'all about this one. While in prayer with uh, some of my spiritual sisters, we were in prayer. We was, I'm telling y'all, we was, oh my God, we were so deep into the prayer. And as we all was praying, I began to see us in the spirit realm and we were at war. We were at war and we were fighting. And my spiritual sisters had machine guns. I saw them shooting. I was like, oh God, I want one. <laughs> I still want one at my heart. I really do want one. And one time I was in prayer um, and for uh, this woman of God. And uh, she was going, she had been going through some things. And God was getting, I didn't know. I woke up. I, oh my God, my sister called me. She woke me up out of my sleep. And I don't know if I was having a bad dream. I don't know what was going on. But I woke up with the most excruciating headache that I've ever felt in my life and she was she called she was calling me because she wanted me to pray for this young lady and um I was like I don't know since I, I got a real bad headache I don't think I'm going to be able to um pray and I heard the spirit of God say pray press press your way press through it so I was like okay God and I started pressing through it and I prayed and I pray for this woman of God. And God just began to reveal some things uh, for her and about her. And, and in the midst of that, I saw in the spirit realm that God was releasing to her spiritual binoculars. Oh, God. Spiritual binoculars where she would be able to see the enemy miles and miles away off before he even reach her she's gonna already see it and that she will begin to see in the spirit realm and she'll be able to she begin to see things a ways off before it even happened years maybe even down the line because he was giving her spiritual binoculars and i also want some spiritual binoculars amen I would love to have that. Glory to God. Okay. Six is you are keenly aware that your words have authority. You speak what you speak actually happens. I'm going to read that again. You are keenly aware that your words have authority and what you speak actually happens okay <laughs> this is so true and even before i knew what a prophet was or i was even a prophetess i would say things and when i spoke it it happened and i thought that was the most weirdest thing ever like how did i do that one time my baby father was trying to leave he, he was trying to go somewhere and he was trying to leave me in the house by myself and I wanted to go with him and um he wouldn't take me with him and um he was like okay forget it I'm not I'm not gonna go we're gonna go back in the house so we all went back in the house and he was with his baby sister y'all forgive me because I just got off of work oh my god I'm sorry anywho he had um Grabbed his baby sister and they both went and got in the car. I was in the restroom. He went and got in the car and he took off and left me. And I sat there. I was so mad. Now, I'm, I'm very trans. Let's, let's get this out the way. I am very transparent. I am a human being. I, I, listen, let me tell you something. Prophets are human beings. We're not deep, deep like that. I don't know why people portray us as we are these deep people. Listen, we're deep, but we're not deep, deep like that as they trying to make us be. We we all we're comedians. We we we're we're just just as human as anybody else. We're not superficial. We're not super saints. We're not. Listen, we we're human just like you. We have flesh, 
just like you. I'm no different than anybody else. I can fall just like anybody else, okay? But anyways, I am transparent, so let's talk about it. <laughs> anyways, he left He left me and he, he took off with the in the car with his baby sister. And I was so mad that I said, I hope that car stopped on him and he have to walk home. Lo and behold, not even 30 minutes after I said that, he come walking up the, the cornfield with his sister up on his neck because the car quit on him and he had to walk back home. See, we have to be careful what we speak, especially when we're prophetic. Because what we speak can come to pass. I told this um, story about Elisha on the other video. How when he went up to um, Shun uh, to Shunem, he uh, passed through there. And the Shunemite woman saw him and she perceived that he was a man of God. And so she built the room, an extra room for him. And she was taking care of him every time he came through there. Now, I don't know what he was coming through there to do. But she was taking care of him every time he went through there. So, um, he wanted to do something for her. And he called her. And she answered the call. And he asked her what would, you know, he like for her to do. do should he make mention to her, to the king? You know, to those uh, that was at High Elite in the area that she lived in. And she was like, no, I hang amongst my own family, my own people. She had her own people. She was rich. She didn't need nothing. Everything that they had, she already had. So, Gehazi said, listen, she don't, I don't see a male child. She doesn't have a kid. She don't have a baby boy. And so, he told uh, Gehazi uh, to go get the Shunammite woman. And she came back and he told her, he spoke to her, he said, by this time next year, you will have a baby. You will have a son. And sure enough, the next year, she had a son. God didn't say that she was going to have a son. God didn't tell him to prophesy or to speak to her and tell her that she was going to have a son. He spoke it, and it happened because he's a prophet. So we have to be careful of what we say because it can happen, okay? It says... And here it says, sometimes you may even be afraid to verbalize some things because you don't want to see them. You don't want to see them happen. So we have to be careful at what we say. We be careful of the words that we use because we're prophets and what we speak can happen. Number seven, other people have told you that things you prayed or said actually happened. Yes. They're going to come back and confirm. Okay. What what you say. Soon as you say it sometimes. Like immediately. Sometimes it, it might come a little later. Or because nine times out of ten. Like when you when God give you a word. Is, is normally confirmation for that person. Now, sometimes it be um, that which is to come, you know, it, or it haven't happened yet, but it be a lot of time confirmation to things that uh, God has already spoke or that uh, someone has already spoke to them. Eight, you are drawn to the prophetic and probably have a lot of dreams and see symbols of eagles and all sorts of things. I dream every time I close my eyes. Not when I fall asleep. Every time I close my eyes. I'm dreaming something. Like, as soon as I lay down, close my eyes, I'm dreaming. It's not, I'm not even asleep yet, and I'm dreaming. And nine times out of ten, a lot of the times, that's when it, it happens. Right in, in the in the midst of realm. Uh, it's called realm. Like, you in between trying to fall asleep, but still woke. That's where a lot of my prophetic dreams come in at. But I dream a lot of prophetic dreams 
uh, be long the whole night dream just nothing but dreams I dream every day I thought everybody dreamed every day but I found out that some people don't even dream I never knew that I thought this was a normal thing because it was something that normally happened that normally happened with me so I thought that it normally happened with others but it doesn't not everybody dreams every, they, they might dream every now and again but every day mm -mm. I dream every single day other, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you've helped people get free or delivered from situations. You have helped people get free or delivered from situations. And, and, and I'm, I want to talk about this because I'm one of those kind of people that don't like to deal in the manners of relationships, okay? But I I saw some things concerning relationships and I had to speak it because it was bubbling in my spirit and it wouldn't let me go. So that lets me know that, okay, you have to tell that person that this is going on because they need to know, you know? And um, I had to... I mean, I was mad about it because I don't like to deal with, mar especially if they marry, marital situations. And then I'm single. I'm not married yet. So I don't want no one to see, to think that, oh, she's single. She just want me to be single because she's single and all these different type of things that comes up. I don't want nobody to say, well, you said that this was going to happen or you saw this happen. So um, and now I'm I'm by myself, or I'm with this person that's evil. Watch this. I'm I don't control what happens <laughs> when in the situation. I just see something that happens with you and that person. That's it. I don't control the what happens. If I could, I would. Yes, I can speak some things, but I, I, nine times out of ten. I'm not going to see everything that happened because prophecy come in parts, baby. Y'all got to know it come in parts. It's not going to come to me all at one time. I'm not going to sit here. Let me, this, and this is how you know that people be lying when they be prophesying to you because they saying things right back. No, God does not. That's not how the prophetic work. If it did. Who God, so many people would be okay. I would be okay within myself, but prophecy comes in part. You cannot get the whole prophecy together like that back to back. No, I might dream one part of this. God may speak the other part and the other part might come through a sign. That's how it works. It doesn't come back to back like that. So I don't know that this person is going to be evil toward you. All I saw was you guys together. That's it. Oh, yes, woman. Yes, man. Oh, yes. I I saw a vision of you and this person together. I don't know what the outcome or the turnout is going to be with y'all together. I just see that y'all together. That's, that's how you know. Okay? I had to help the young lady get free of her situation and it's still a process and it's still it's still a process we're working on it and then god gave me a dream about somebody that need a deliverance so i'm gonna have to help that person get delivered out of that situation that they're in you have a standard for righteousness and can see many problems within your church and others that others may not listen. I need y'all to hear this one. Okay. Glory to God. You have a standard for righteousness and can see many problems within your church that others may not see. For a long time, I thought God was placing me in these churches to see. The problems. Like this wrong, this is wrong, this wrong. See, we like order. Prophetic people love order. Order. It's got to be order. Ain't no order here. 
How you operating and there's no order? We love excellency. Spiritual excellence. We love spiritual excellence. And we love order. We like for things to be right. I'm going to go to the next one on that one. Because a lot of people, uh, they don't. Oh, my God. I'm just going to go to the next one. Here, here, here we go. You feel separated or apart from most people in your church. And you see the need for deep repentance. You feel separated and apart from most people in your church. And you see the need. For deep repentance. That's pretty much explanatory. If you're wondering why come. You're not. It's like you're not connecting. Or you at, you distant from everybody else. That's a sign that you might be a prophet. Baby. You might be a prophet. And you need to start searching out. What the prophet. So you can get an understanding of who you are. So you can be okay with you. Because for a long time. I knew something was wrong with me. Like something is wrong with me. I can't be around too many people. Like I can go around them for a little while. But then all of a sudden. I got to get away. I, My spirit be like no ma'am. You can't stay long. You can go but you can't stay long. You got to separate yourself. It's just how. It works. It, we always like, it's almost to like we're always in isolation. Well, for one, we get in isolation to ourselves so that we can hear God. Two, people don't understand us. Like they just don't. We are often rejected. That's one of the things that I truly, truly want to talk about. Being a prophet, you're rejected a lot. People reject you for no reason. For no apparent reason. People reject you when you first enter into the room. They don't know who you are. They never seen you. But they don't like you and they reject you. We often feel abandoned. It's like people. Why all the most important people in my life that I think supposed to love me abandon me. We deal with a lot of those issues. And it's it just only because we, we hold the gift of a prophetic office. We walk in the office of a prophet. Okay. Let's go on. Because I got to get me some rest. I am tired. Okay. You generally do not follow other people. You follow God and what he is telling you to do. This means that you are a loner. And you may not have a lot of friends. If any at all. I just said that. Broke up with a whole friend because I was following what God was telling me to do. My friend... She just, well, woman of God, I think that God is, God does not do that, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. We can live with that. You don't have many friends. I don't have many friends. And sometimes, to be honest with you, it, it kind of, it, it, it sucks because you, you want a friend, you want to have somebody that you can come in with and go out and, you know, have fun and, and to dinner and, you know, girls night, you know, but nope, I don't, I don't have many friends, but that's okay because I've become accustomed. I've become used to it. Um, 13 says you often misunderstood 
These are just some of the traits that goes with being a prophet. You're, you're misunderstood. Don't nobody understand you. So that's one of the reasons why come you spend a lot of time alone. I just I stated that earlier on in the video. You just, you misunderstood. No one understands you. You are a black and white person. There, there is no in between. Either you're right or you're wrong. There's no almost in between. None of that. It's either this way or that way. Which, which, which way? Which one you want to do? It's just basically who we are. It's like okay, this is what I'm doing. Okay, this is I'm here right now. And this is what I'm doing. I'm not doing that because I'm doing this. Pretty much. There's no gray areas in there. That was uh, number 14. So here we are to number 15 because there were 15 signs to determine. This is the last one. Your deepest desire is to turn people away from sin and toward God. From sin to repentance and to restoration, okay? This is one of the biggest deals and the things that we want to do as prophets. We want for people to turn away from their sins and toward God. We feel a, we feel so sorrowful. We cry a lot when it has something to do with people because we can see and feel and we know what God wants. So it's like, oh God, if I what can I, you know, what can I do with, you know, how can I help you? Man? Whatever the case may be, but sometimes we just can't. We can't win everybody, but we want to win everybody. We want everybody to come to God and turn away from their sins. And it's it's a hurtful feeling to us because we can't make them change. But we want, oh, we want it for you so bad. Oh, and then when I see, oh my God. When I see somebody give their life to God, oh, Jesus. It's one of the most beautiful feelings for me in the world. Like I know that the angels are in heaven rejoicing, but I rejoice with them because that is, that is most sacred and most beautiful thing that you can ever do is give your life to God. Give your life to God, people. Give it to him so that he can work out every kink, every twist. Glory to God. Every quick cricket place, he makes them straight. You got to give it to him so that he can work it out for you. So that he can process the process for you. He, he can walk you through the process. But you got to trust and believe in, in him. And you got to turn from your wicked ways. And you got to give it all to God. Will you be 100% right? Absolutely not. See, that's the thing with God. All God wants to see is that you're actually doing it. All God wants to see is that you're actually walking. So that I leave that with you. Turn away. Give your life to God. So that he can process you. And that he can walk you through the process. Well, that was the video for today. I hope I said something that blessed you. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section uh, of what you think or if there's any kind of questions that you have, please ask them. The only dumb question is the question that's not asked. So ask them and I promise to get back with you. You guys have a blessed and wonderful day. Till next time, thank you for watching.